Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia, and I'm super excited to bring Humankind to the channel. Now previously they had a few open devs before, uh, nicknamed Lucy. I wasn't able to play that during that period, uh, I think I was busy with something else. But this time, from April 22nd to May 3rd, the second open dev, nicknamed Victor, based on the avatar you're playing as, is available for everyone. You simply have to link uh, your Steam account or Epic account to their Game Together platform and you will gain access to their open dev. So the purpose of these open dev for the game is for players to experience about 150 turns of the game and provide feedback to developers as they are working hard to finish the game for release later this year. And this is pretty much just an open beta if you want to think about it that way. And this is how the game looks right now. Uh, you have your player versus certain AIs. Here we have seven opponents. Um, the cool thing here is that they have put some of uh, the streamers of the game who has early access to the game uh, their personality in as AIs you can play against if you link your Twitch account uh, to their platform as well. Uh, I haven't done that and that's fine I just want to play against some basic AIs although there are some uh, really nice name here. Uh, I grew up watching a lot of Marb uh, playing Civilization. I was a big fan of Civilization so I am familiar with 4X games and for those of you who are unfamiliar with Humankind it is an upcoming 4X game similar to Civilization obviously with some differences. Uh, the main one is that instead of playing as a given civilization through the ages, you are developing humankind. And in each era, you pick up a civilization style. So you can pick existing civilization from that era, and their bonuses become your own civilization's bonuses. So you're adapting from different civilization history, combining into a unique civilization that is yours. And the combinations of these potential civilizations as you progress makes the game replayable and different and the strategy revolving around that because not everyone uh, will be able to snatch the one they want because you need certain points to reach the next era and all the other players are working towards that at the same time. So if someone reached there before you, they get the selection of civilization first and once someone selected that civilization, you no longer have access to it. So you have to adapt as well. Um, currently the game has uh, pretty much all the difficulties. I have not played Humankind at all because I wasn't able to play the Lucy one and Victor is the newest one. Uh, so we're just going to start on normal difficulty, which is Metropolis. And obviously it moves up quite far, also can be moved down a little bit. But I think the default one is fine. Uh, we'll go with normal, see how things feel mainly playing this to get a feel for the game and see if it's fun, um, see if everyone can be interested in the game. As we do have pre-order on the uh, the store uh, that I have on the link below. So if you do want to pre-order the game and would like me to get a share of the profits, uh, feel free to use that link. Uh, but enough said, let's jump into the game and see how things are. And I don't think I'm going to be cutting anything out because I just want to kind of check out the open dev here. So we are starting in the Neolithic air. Uh, obviously you're still progressing from air to air. Each time you progress through air, you get to pick one of those civilization uh, styles to be added into yours. Uh, we are currently just a nomadic tribe. That is our current culture. Basically we're nothing. And you can see all the different cultures being represented here. You got a little bit of the Viking going on. Scimitars, some World War I troops. There's some uh, Chinese Confucian scholar. Rice farmer. Got elephants. Greek. I presume Roman. This looks like French Revolution type of uh, painting, actually. And then you have us progressing through the errors, pyramids. Ooh. And we're loaded into the game. Okay, so this is our starting unit. It is our hunting party army. We start out on the prairie. I believe the game map is preset as in there is no randomization this is the only map we get to play during the open dev and uh, these are ai opponents 
we're currently in this air and we have certain goals um, ramsack animal lairs to gain large amount of food and prevent animals from spawning in the area to ransack a lair so sanctuary select your army and ransack one okay so if we want to get rid of the animals we can go do that uh, understood so um, here is our game map so you can see they're divided into these zones by the dotted lines I believe when you create your own city they will instantly occupy a whole territory you're claiming the territory to be your city your city will grow into it but the boundary is preset and in the beginning our goal is to advance through the air right currently we are uh, this nomadic tribe in the Neolithic era and we want to progress to the ancient era and the way we can do that is to gain at least one star so once we have unlocked one star out of all these requirements we can pick our culture and these are the culture that's available for the advancement to the ancient air so most of these are obviously ancient air civilizations you have the babylonians egyptians um harapens and each of them have a bonus based on the historical significance of that culture and this is going to shape your playstyle. you get a unique building you get a unique unit so this part is kind of similar to how you would play in civilization except for every time you advance through a time period you get to add another culture into your humankind experience so overall uh, you're basically collecting different bonuses if you want to be focused on war you might go with the mycenaeans which are the greeks uh, for us uh, the target is very very clear we're going for Zhou which is the Zhou dynasty of ancient China. Uh, this will be your early spring autumn period. And uh, for the Zhou dynasty, our bonuses are based on culture. Uh, Chinese civilization here is given a very culture play style. We get stability, which is something I don't know what, what it does in the game yet, but we get two points of it on the district. Our unique building is the Confucian school. We get three points of stability, we get one science, five science per adjacent mountain, and plus one researcher slot on city or outpost. And our unique unit is the Zhan Chu, or basically the chariot. And it has a two unit chariot with one person holding a very large spear and one person manning the horse. Now, historically, I guess spring autumn. I, I mean, it obviously started out with uh, two unit uh, chariots, but I think the standard chariot size for uh, battle during this period for uh, the Spring Autumn would be a three man chariot. There should be another archer uh, on the chariot as well, but that's fine. And we need one horse. We need copper. Uh, that I think that's either bronze or copper. I think it's copper. Uh, the resources prerequisite. And we need to research the wheel technology after entering the ancient era to. Uh, get this unit it is a heavy cavalry fast hard hitting mounted unit to charge enemies receive combat strength if attacking non-adjacent enemies non-adjacent enemies okay unable to climb fortifications mandate of heaven bonus combat strength when stability is high okay interesting now another huge reason why i'm going to pick this aside from the fact that i am personally chinese is that it will change your game music when you select a civilization so we'll get a lot of uh gu qin music in the background once we do select it now obviously another ai player could beat us to it uh, because you do have that trade-off now there's plenty to choose from it's not like you're gonna run out of one it's just that you might run out the one that you want when you do get to it and the reason why we might not be first is i might want to get more than one star because once i leave the neolithic era i can't get these missions and when you do these missions you get fame and fame is really your score in the game the game humankind is about making a very famous civilization leaving your mark for humankind in history so how many or how much fame you have really determines um you know how successful your gameplay was so we might want to do more of these so the first one is the growth star we need to have population of five total and the way we gain population in the game is by gathering food um, with more food you get more units which are populations and we need five of them currently we have one 
And then there is the knowledge star. Discover curiosities or basic points of interest on the map to occur 10 science curiosities currently at zero. We will also unlock a Neolithic legacy trait. So I'm assuming what happens with this is that we will have a trait that will give us a bonus throughout the errors if we complete this. And then we can also have the hunter star. Hunt a total of three animal units, currently uh, zero. And we get a star, 100 fame. And then there's also competitive deeds uh, that we are doing with all the other uh, AI civilizations, or yeah, I guess we'll call them civilizations here, or cultures, fellow humankind. And this is things we can do. And there are actually more. I believe um, there are wonders of the world, natural wonders that you can discover first. I believe those give you 50 fame as well. And these are deeds that we can basically compete with other civilizations. They're not linked to a uh, error per se. This is just something that's going to go on throughout the game, like the first faction uh, to gain access to every strategic and luxury resource, become famous for that, first faction to build a wonder, and so forth. And as I said, first faction to uh, visit a natural wonder, discover it, will also get some fame points as well. And that's pretty much it. Uh, competitive Spirit Error Star. This catch-up category progressively grants you access until you unlock the next error. Ah, so when someone gets there first, it will tell you, and you start getting points to towards getting one in case you're stuck. Okay, I see. And I believe in this early um, access or open dev build, you have access to the first four errors. I'm not sure, maybe five, given that this one's crossed out, but this one isn't. So first five, I guess they don't consider Neolithic to be one. Uh, basically going from ancient on, uh, you do have access to them. So that's kind of how the game flow works. We can keep track of our progression to those uh, three stars over here. Animal three, science 10, uh, population one or two five. And this is our current population. So this is our army per se. Um, it has up to four slots for uh, units. And you can see that we gain a new unit or gain a new population once we gather 20 points of food. And each of these points right here is a food curiosity. So I think there are two of them on our map right now. You can see um, you gain food here. So uh, it's considered curiosity tile. You can discover science or food based on the icon. It's food. And I'm not interested in destroying an animal lair. If I destroy that, then there will be no more uh, deer spawns here or animal spawns. And now deer and mammoth, I believe, are friendly animals, as in uh, they will not attack us aggressively. We can attack them. You can attack them like this. You can see the strength difference. And instead of the traditional civilization game where you just uh, enter combat on the board directly, you get this deployment phase. You get a battle. So almost like Total War, where you switch from the campaign map to like a battle map where you can see the highlighted zones are where we can deploy and since we have possibility of multiple units within an army uh, we can spread them out and then the battle will commence on this directed zone and the defending side actually has like a defensive flag they can defend and so forth uh, but for the animals we're not gonna really care about them let's we're just going. go grab ourselves food that's our movement we got 10 food per curiosity there and we run into this river, a new zone. So you can kind of see uh, the zones here. And different terrains will have different movement point requirements. We walked across a couple planes, so we used two for two steps. Now we're probably gonna cross a river now, so we don't have to cross one next turn. And I believe you cannot move down the cliffs like that. You have to, right, you have to take the, the slope part, not the really cliffed looking part. But we're gonna take that so we can get to the other side of the river next turn lots of forest probably would have scouted here but then we probably have to move down anyways but that's fine uh once we get another food we can get a second unit and we are out of movement so let us enter some faction discovered the Danakil desert good for them and you can see that on the deeds a new deeds has appeared 
and someone already got it. A unknown faction. And the deer is gonna wander around. I'm not gonna actually take the time to hunt him. As the eagle flies. That costed us two movements. Oh, that that's a science curiosity. And that is the resource copper. This way. Another food that so we collected uh, ancient encampment curiosity. So you can see our points going up here. Now the key thing for us now is to grab that next turn. Because once we get our second guy, we can split them into two different armies and can cover more ground much faster. So let's do that. And... As you can see, we gathered 10... Oh, that's only worth 5. Oh, that is unfortunate. So... This way. Another animal. Hmm, I had to cross the river. Oh well. Onward. It's a forest. Ebony. Ebony deposit. Okay, that's an interesting resource. While well, crossing that river took the whole, whole movement. As the eagle flies. Later we rest. That is a food. Another five food, wild berries. Now we can split them if we had movement points, which we will do next turn. Oh, we gotta left click that. Now we have two armies, technically, that can do exploring on two different sides. Um, I might have this one go hunt a little bit. Because we do need to finish that. And we know there's a deer here. There's the science. Go get that one. And you can continue. Ooh, horse. Okay. Remember now, we need a horse and a copper to build our unique unit. Assuming we're going for the Jode uh, culture. And it looks like these things respawn on the map, so I'd love to go get it again. And even though we split them, we're still getting the two total to keep track of it. And another highlight of this open dev is that it's designed to focus on naval combat, which is why there's a lot of water. sell 15 food there can we fight you ah! and this is the battle so we can confirm the battle uh, or delegate it and we will just experience it there's going to be about three uh, turns of it and this is when you can deploy on certain terrains and they will also deploy on certain terrains so given where they can deploy I'm just gonna put it here it looks good and we can end deployment and we can start attacking and there's three rounds of each battle. So it looks like we can deal more damage to him. Because we have more combat. Let's do it. We lost 20, he lost 38. We have to end the round. Oh, he's, it's his turn. Oh, he charged us. He still lost more than us. Now it's our turn again. And we should be able to finish him off. Not really. He gets one more charge us. We got him. We took a lot of damage. We got five food and five points of... I think these are influence. I don't know what they're used for yet. Ah. Merging cities, claiming cultural wonders, and expanding your empire by placing or attaching outposts. Okay, so maybe like culture points and civilizations dictating how big your city is. Alright, this is our victory. Good for us. We got a new unit because we got that five food. And I believe I saw another food over here spawn. I want the science. Um, I'm going to have this guy explore. 
rather than fight. One army fighting is enough. We need to get more science. It looks like a dead end here though. Oh well. Let's continue. We do heal back a little bit. And you can see that. I remember there was a science over here. Yes, there is. Kind of forgot where exactly it was. We're going this way. Okay, got another food. I think we're gonna hit the population one pretty quick. Science is going, but not getting there yet, and we'll try to hunt more animals here. Let's continue. We have discovered Lake Baika uh, Baikau. Natural wonder right here. And if you're wondering the traditional civilization game, there are production tiles. on. We're just not looking at them. And it is a hexagon grid as well. Uh, just visually, it's probably better for us at this point when we actually are not um, building our cities to look at them. So they're too strong as well. I might split this group. We just need one more. And you need to... Ooh, how did you get swift? How did you get swift, though? <laughs> That's my question. Um, well, there's still a large portion of the map that we haven't explored. So let me just go there. We get six steps. Wait, and we... Wait, wait, we took two steps. Somehow we only used one movement. We're going... Uh, one and a half movement, maybe. Well, that's complicated. I see. Okay, the river crossings do take a bit of movement here. And we'll split this group off next turn. A world of flame got a random event. In the distance, a thin cord of smoke cuts up into the clear blue skies. Fire. Calling a few tribesmen, you run closer. The smell of cindered bark and burning pine growing stronger with each footfall. You spy dancing flames and suddenly find yourself on the edge of a settlement on fire. Many of the structures are ablaze, but even with the smoke and the flames, you can see these abodes are marvels of craftsmanship. You are about to direct your men to put out the fires with loose soil. When you see short, shadowed figures running away. Youth, they could become part of your tribe if you give chase now, but that would mean losing the secrets of construction. What is your choice? Spawn army, my new army. <laughs> That's a coding. That's gotta be a coding thing in hunting party. Okay, so we basically will get another unit and that will put us at five. But I think we can get there pretty easily. Because we gotta hunt two more things and that's probably enough food to get another one. Understanding how to build stronger settlements will be vital in the future. Modify city defense research costs by 25%. There we go. Save the houses. Let the kids run away. Wait, didn't we end turn? Did that not... Oh, we got re-end turn? Okay, now we got movements. So we did discover natural wonder. We got some fame for that. Oh, we did want to split them, that's right. We can still have movement, so let's split them forward. Ooh. I'm surprised that's not an actual resource. Alright, I'll go left, you go right, even though that looks kind of like a dead end. Onward. We move. Moving on the river doesn't cost us anything extra. Ooh! Mount Roramia. Well, that is stunning. This way. Later. Yeah. All right, more food. Oh. Sanctuary. So there should be an animal nearby. We can probably hunt that. Now we're probably going to have to start deciding what region we want to eventually claim. The horse is tempting, but maybe natural wonder in our region is good. Maybe we explore this little zone. Alright, that's all. Back 
to you guys. This way. A lair. The dark and fiddish dwelling of a dangerous oh barbarians. Um maybe not our single unit. What is this? Ah, so maybe a resource that we don't recognize yet. You're telling me this is not a, this is not a um, natural one there. It looks pretty cool. We move. I mean, with all the hot spring next to it. Onward. I guess we go south. They go north. Cover that. The sanctuary here, but I don't want to destroy. I want to find animals. We're going. Ooh, there's a horse in this region that almost settles What's it. Over there? Natural wonder. Ooh, a mammoth. Okay. This way. We'll go fight that. For the tribe. So, 13. Uh, we're 20 because we have two units. We definitely can beat them. To so confirm battle. That setup is fine. And we attack. And we attack. And now it's his turn. Oh no no. Oh wait, right. his turn and then it's us. Back him. Hmm. Might we lose a population? Together. High ground advantage? Yeah, plus four combat strength. Okay. There is such a thing. And then we finish him off. No? He said a little bit of health left. We lost a unit. Oh, that is that's a heavy cost. Uh, no food even. Okay. What? Whoa. Oh, it's just animating the, the damage. All right, there's no one with uh, movement. We we might be able to pick up a new unit here. That's a bit of a setback. We're still swift. All right, we did get another unit back. We need to hunt one more animal. Hunting does have its dangers. So I'm very interested in claiming this zone. Now we just want to explore it a little bit. Okay, not much going on here. I could technically try to ransack this. It might slow down our hunting. Alright, it takes us a turn. Okay. Meanwhile, our boys over here. Uh, we hit a river. Oh well, eventually we have to hit a river. And they can get a population here as well. Not getting any science, which... Alright, we hit the goal. We got our first star. Someone took someone took a culture. The Harapans got picked. The Nubians got picked. Ooh. We have plundered. We need more science. Later we rest. These are all food. Hmm, where are all the signs hiding at? We got 20 food from that from one ramsacking right there, but we didn't get any animals. Now... No, remind me later. It's gonna be a full tribe. Hmm, we might split one of them off at this point. I want to get the science legacy one. Mycenaean has been picked. Man, we're just gambling here. Um, let me split you off. We're going. That is another hunting party. With different culture. 
Hmm. Oh, it's a dead end. Not very good here. Science! Okay, we'll get that science. You. You, what do I do with you? Later we rest. No, that's a dead end. <sighs> Onwards. This is not good. We move. As the eagle flies. Okay, we gotta split the party off next turn for sure. Ah, the Nubians. Okay. So now they have a culture we can see their cult. They claimed it, right? Yeah, they claimed this territory. This is their region. So are we technically trespassing? Ah, because we have neighboring units, it's taking all our movement. Interesting. That would be a mountain. That we can see some of their farmlands, even. I think we're gonna end up claiming this. There's sage, there's horses. So we're gonna probably split one off to keep a guy over here in the future. Can I split two? Later. I have to split and merge. Oh, oh, that works. That works. As the eagle flies. Science. All right, we just need one more science point. Oh, there's one right here. This way. Okay. And then you get ready to claim this in the future. Yeah, yeah, we'll explore around. Beyond. And I'll walk that way, huh? We move. It's a cliff. Ooh, that's a science right here, too. Okay, this is getting a little bit dangerous. I'm on top of their city. That, that, that's why. See? That's their city. Are they fighting us? Hello? This is just war? Uh... Sure. We can just hold the flag. So this is a defense battle. We can die here. It's fine. Um, we'll deploy on there. They have three turns to beat us. We are going to defend, which will give us combat strength. Round three. Are they even coming? If they don't take the flag, they have a swordsman or something. Oh, we held. So technically we won, but we're still in trouble, obviously. He attacked us. I mean, it's fair. We're, we're definitely trespassing. We're like taking all his stuff. Um, oh, we got to get one more hunt down, though. There's a sanctuary here, but there's no animals. All right, that's everyone's movement. Let me just get this science done really quickly. There we go. And it'd be a shame to not finish the hunting one at this point. Alright, get a little bit stronger. I don't think we can beat them per se. There's gotta be some defensive bonus for this. Nor do I want to be like that warring type of faction. Although I do have five men around him. Um, it looks like he claimed two territories or something. Let me get stronger. You, you guys can run away. I'm gonna get out of his land. He will slowly get out of his land. What is this? A different faction. Um, I don't need that science anymore. I need animals. Give me an animal. Looks like this is claimed. What's over there? 
All right, this is a claimed territory. Why this way? Hello. This way. Is that a deer? Okay, we found a deer. We're ready to claim this whenever we get a chance. So finish. Let's finish exploring it. Uh -huh. Wait, can I claim this for us now? My only question is, is that like my capital? Because that's not where I would like it. Okay, let's just get this done quickly before I lose my preferred culture. A tribe's legacy. You stand at a crossroad. For many moons, the tribes have tracked the wilderness, slowly, torturously, learning the secrets of this world. How the material is hidden in the deep places, in the deep places, and in plain sight, might be fashioned to the tribe's advantage. How the beasts and plants of the land and sea can be most fruitfully harvested, and how myth and stories can glacially but inescapably give power over our greatest enemies, other tribes. Now you must decide in what domain the tribe will truly sharpen its knowledge for the ages to come. We will be renowned as makers, farmers, or charmers. Ah, legacy traits. Plus one industry per population on city or outposts? Hmm. Plus one food per population on cities or outposts. Plus one science. Okay. Let's feed ourselves first. I think all ancient civilizations need to take care of that problem first before they do anything. And I think we're going to hit end turn again because that happens before the end turn. Do not hunt that deer. That deer is my. Finally. And the other unit get kicked out here. Yeah, I think we are high ground now. Oh, smart deer. They can deploy too. Alright, but this is probably going to be easier than uh, killing mammoth. Yes, we did it. Hunter Star has been finished. We can advance now. And we can pick which one. And we can see who picked what. The Omax have been picked, Nubian's been picked, Mycenaean has been picked, the Harapens have been picked, and now Zhou is going to get picked. So we have other choices, obviously, if you're curious about the game. Uh, the Phoenicians, uh, the makers of the coins, inventor of the currency, uh, they're trading uh, naval uh, faction. So modify all constructible gold buyout cost by, so cheaper to buy out constructions, I guess, like rushing buildings, maybe? A haven. Uh, decrease stability plus money per adjacent coastal water plus money per adjacent lake. Trader slot on city or outpost replaces harbor. Is a naval unit spawn allow unit to embark without any movement penalties? And the Byram. So okay, naval faction. The Hittites. I think they're the first one to use iron. Um, combat strengths, lust for war. So a warring faction automatically upgrade regular outpost. To a Wari uh, can be used as a land spawn point for neighboring cities. Is a land unit spawn is fortified, and their unit is the Gigar, which is another chariot. Right, a lot of the most powerful units during this period are chariots. I'm gonna guess Egyptian is also a chariot. Yes, the Makarabi, and this is an archer ranged one. Um, they are builders of the wonders, so they get plus one industry on district, producing other industry modified district industry cost by 10%, so cheaper, and also gives you more. Egyptian pyramids is their unique building, plus one, or maybe unique tiles, maybe the way I, I should put it. Uh, plus one influence, plus three industry, minus stability, plus three industry per adjacent maker's quarter. Plus one worker slot on city or outpost. Okay. And Babylonian should be the science. Right. And the Sarians 
our plus one land movement speed, and they have the first cavalry in the world here. Okay, all right, we are going with Jolt. Finally, an emblematic district and an emblematic unit. So basically, unique ones are called emblematic. Okay. Yes, yes, we know. Let's do it. So, did we ascend? Maybe after next turn. Um, so I do want to claim this area. But first I want to take a look at what else is over here, how big the area is really. Pearls. I mean we found this is pretty much the boundary. Oh preset capitals, huh? I want to cancel it. I have to go here or here. Why is that such a huge science place? Are they just recommending like... Like, do I lose the science? Oh no, they're doing the math. They're adding all adjacent tile production. This is not how much I gain, this is how much is surrounding those areas, isn't it? Right, 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. No, that's only, that's only 12. We get two bonus ones? But this is also 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 and says 14. I'll we'll get 2 extra. We we'll get 2 extra of everything. Right? Because there's only... There's only... There's only 3 production for that. It's showing 5 production. So I guess we don't lose the other things. It's just like... How good the surrounding tile sum is. Um... This looks fine. Let's go claim it next to a sage whatever that's worth right now no idea um let's see we have still movements yeah keep growing i don't think there's a punishment for growing getting attacked again just let us leave okay yeah we'll, we'll just hold again defending in force but then okay it's fine He's, he starts the attack. And he's just going for it in the beginning. High ground too. Oh wow, we're in trouble. Defend. Yeah, we're dead. That first strike shocked and all. And we're gone. It's okay. That you know wasn't getting out if they were going to be aggressive about it. We'll remember that, my friends. We'll remember that. Ah! Right, I don't know if I have enough to attack the city, but I definitely have enough to make his life miserable. He will do more damage. This is the closest one. 9 to 19, 8 to 19, 8 to 15. Together. Earth gives us oh. oh, the high ground bonus on him. Okay. 
Wow, slaughtered us. I think we can just power him out. Sure, we'll take heavy damages, but I think we got him. Fire be with us. Supposed to kill that. He's just gonna defend. Earth gives us strength. Come on. There we go. We lost two units. Just a little payback, even though I don't think it's worth, but it's fine. Uh, we get out of here later. We have still this guy who's growing still. Alright, next turn it is. Let's turn this off. Seed of idea. Yesterday the tribe came across a vast tract of wild grain. The stalks swayed in the breeze like the wind playing over golden waters. The ground down grain could feed the tribe twice over. One of the tribal elders had another idea. Instead of pounding the seed into flour, you suggest planting half of them so the grasses may return next summer. It is a curious idea, at odds with the nomadic life, but perhaps a harbinger of the future. What should you do? If we plant it, modify domestication research by 25%, or we gain plus two food on cities or outposts. We plant it. Let's be smart here. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Alrighty, and we have become an ancient era, the culture of Jolt, and the music and background has definitely changed. And words of the Empire have reached the Nubians. The Olmacs, because we met them. And I think this is a good place to end our episode. Um, we're going to be claiming this territory, building our first city, and experiencing what that brings. We have obviously new challenges we need seven stars uh, to move on so there's a lot of different challenges here reach 300 influence claim five territories attached to any city including the city's territory current value zero have six district built within your empire have 10 population earn 600 money Obtain four technologies, destroy a total of nine military units. And I think these are tiered, right? You can gain up to three stars here. It means after nine, maybe there's a new level. And in total, we need seven stars from these 21 potential uh, bonuses. And the deeds are the same, I believe, right? The new ones are all the ones we have discovered two of the natural wonders. And that is that. Uh, so we are officially in our first... Um, culture and we can probably look at uh the culture tiles right so cultural transcendence no that's the one we have we can see the new ones kasumites the greeks carthian celts goth huns might be a little early for Hans, isn't it? Marians, Mayan, Persian, Roman. Very nice. Yeah, so you can adapt different bonuses and playstyles to kind of go along and gain new, I guess they call it emblematic uh, districts and emblematic units to form your unique civilization and so forth. So that's, that's that. Um, we'll be right back with another episode. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. And I look forward to playing this more on the channel. Not only... Ah, that's the music. That's why we picked Droll. Anyways. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And see you guys next time. Bye.